An EQ pedal is a great tool for sculpting your tone. Boston Source Audio both offer comparable pedals with the EQ200 and the EQ2. But which one should you get? We're gonna find out. What is up everyone, Man Bun Metalhead here. These two pedals offer a lot of the same features, but also have some significant differences. But before you go any further, if you care about your tone, make sure to like and subscribe. Both these pedals are 10 band, two channel EQs with 128 programmable patches. They each have MIDI, expression and external control capabilities, a USB connection and can be powered by a nine volt supply. Alternatively, the Boss pedal can also be powered by three AA batteries. The Source Audio pedal also has a high pass filter, Q factor or width adjustment, shelves on the first and last bands and a built-in tuner. The prices of these pedals aren't too far apart. At the time of this video, the Boss and Source Audio pedals go for $257 and $269 respectively on Amazon. The Boss pedal has a slight advantage here, but what's $12 when you're spending $250? Moving on to the sizes, the Boss pedal measures in at 5.43 inches deep, 4 inches wide, and 2.37 inches tall. The Source Audio is 4.58 inches deep, 2.75 inches wide, and 2.21 inches tall. The Boss will take up 21.7 square inches, whereas the Source Audio will only take up 12.6. That's 42% less than the Boss. The Boss pedal has an aluminum body with black flake paint job and durable lettering. The Source Audio pedal is brushed aluminum with a blue and black anodized finish. The lettering does not appear to be too durable and you can see it coming off in a few spots. Both pedals have a display. The Source Audio is a 1.75 by 0.65 inch LED display. The Boss is an LCD display measuring 1.2 by 0.6 inches. It's pretty obvious the Boss display has a higher resolution. Both displays will show a frequency graph and are used to display the menus. The Boss display can also show what patch you have loaded. To adjust the frequency levels on the Boss, there are 10 individual sliders, one for each band, as well as one for the output level. On the Source Audio, use the encoder knob to select the frequency and adjust the level. The output level is set by the output knob. The Boss has two additional buttons, the channel button used to select the A or B channel or display the patch number, and the memory button used to select and save patches. The Source Audio has a select button also used to save and select patches. There are two foot switches on the Boss pedal, the on off and memory switches. The Source Audio only has one foot switch. Looking at the lights on the pedals, the Boss lights look nicer than the Source Audio lights in my opinion. Overall, I like the aesthetic of the Boss pedal. To me, the Source Audio pedal has the look of a much cheaper pedal, but I've never really been a fan of the Source Audio designs. Moving on to connections, each pedal has two quarter inch inputs and outputs and a standard nine volt barrel connector. Each pedal has a connector for expression and external control. The Boss has a quarter inch TRS connector, whereas the Source Audio has a 3.5 millimeter TRRS connector. I'll elaborate on what you can do with these connectors later in the video. They both have MIDI in and out connections. The Source Audio has standard five pin DIN connectors, whereas the Boss has 3.5 millimeter TRS connectors. The small connectors on the Boss are nice because they are a little smaller, but there aren't a lot of options for cables. I ended up making my own. They also each have a USB connector, the Boss being a micro USB and the Source Audio a mini USB. The USB ports on both can be used to update the firmware. The Source Audio firmware update is way easier. The Source Audio USB connection can also be used to control the pedal via software on your computer. Now let's get into using these pedals. Let's first look at the Boss. To set the desired EQ, all you have to do is adjust the slider for each band. I should note that if you don't move a slider, that band will stay at whatever position it was saved at in the patch you started with. You can use the last slider to set the output level. If you want to access the second channel, hit the channel button. You have to make sure two things are true though. The link option in the menu is off, which is a global parameter, and there is a connection to input B. Now let's take a look at setting up a patch on the source audio. On the pedal, all of your changes are going to be made with the encoder knob. Press it in and turn to select the band, release and rotate it to adjust the gain. As an added bonus, if you set it up in the software, you can quickly press the encoder knob to change the center frequency and Q factor of the selected band. This can also be done through the menu. To access the second channel while pressing and rotating the encoder knob, pass the last band on the right and you'll switch to it. The split option does need to be turned on, which is patch specific. You can rotate the output knob to set the output level of both channels simultaneously. Yes, this does control the output of both channels. You can adjust the gain of each channel separately via the menu. You can also create patches in the Nero software for the source audio pedal. You can visually make all your adjustments like level, frequency, and Q factor. Here you can see how the Q factor affects the band. Here you can also see that we can name the patches. Since we have the software up, editing a patch is simple. Select the patch, make the edits, and save. Going back to the pedal, select your patch by sending a program change over MIDI or using the select button where you can only select up to patch eight. Here you can make the adjustments for each band the same way you did before. For the output, you can get a rough idea of what it was set to by the brightness of the output knob. 
Obviously, this will be hard to gauge, but if you rotate the knob, at some point you'll see an LED at the top of the display flash twice. That will indicate the previously saved output level. To edit a patch in the boss, select the patch and the sliders magically move to where they were set at. Yeah, that doesn't happen. In my opinion, this is the biggest downfall of this pedal. You don't really know where the slider was set at, and it's difficult to match up the frequency band with the graph. This makes making minor adjustments a pain. You're forced to either try to recreate the exact setting, then adjust from there, or adjust entirely by ear. Unfortunately, there is no way of knowing what the output was set to. When comparing creating and editing patches on these two pedals, I say if you're just using the pedals, the Boss has a slight edge for creating a patch, but the Source Audio has a huge advantage for editing. If you put the Source Audio software in the mix, it wins hands down for creating and editing. I should also note there's a mobile app available for both Android and iPhone that will work with the Source Audio pedal. You can either connect through the headphone jack with a supplied 3.5 millimeter to quarter inch TRS cable or via MIDI. From my experience, it's not all that great. Now you think I might be done comparing these pedals, but of course each pedal does offer even more. So let's get into the nitty gritty. To access a lot of the other options, we'll have to get into the menus. On the boss, you'll hit the channel and memory buttons at the same time. On the source audio, you'll hold down the encoder knob. I think the menu on the boss is much easier to read than the source audio. I won't get into every single option, but here are some of the important ones. First of all, as I mentioned, each pedal has stereo inputs and outputs and each can be configured in parallel or series, called Cascade for source audio and the second channel on each can be used as an effects loop. On both pedals, you can adjust the center frequencies of the bands, starting with the preset frequencies. These are the boss frequencies, and these are the source audio frequencies. To me, the source audio frequencies make more sense because the frequency of each band is double the previous band. That's almost the case for the boss, except going from 120 hertz to 200 hertz, which I think is kind of odd. With the boss, you can switch the frequencies to two other preset groupings. The second option is pretty much identical to the source audio, then there is the third option. On the source audio, each center frequency can be individually adjusted from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The source audio definitely has more flexibility with setting frequencies, but this isn't always completely necessary. Moving on to the expression control. With the boss, you should be able to use any normal expression pedal with a TRS output. However, with the source audio pedal, you must either use the source audio expression pedal or a MIDI controller with expression capabilities. As far as what you can control with the expression pedal, the source audio has a laundry list, and you can control up to four parameters at a time. This is what you can control with the boss. So you can make the boss pedal a volume pedal as well. With the source audio pedal, you can also make it a volume pedal among many other things. I've been playing around with using it as a wah pedal. I've created a patch that's pretty close to my crybaby from hell wah. At this point, I should mention that you can go into the neuro software and search the cloud for uploaded presets, even a few different wahs, including mine. Make sure to check that out. You can also connect an external switch to each pedal. Similarly to the expression control, the boss pedal can take a normal TRS connection, which will give you extra switches. The source audio pedal requires a source audio tap tempo foot switch. Here's a list of what switches you can control. Looking at what you can control via MIDI, each pedal accepts program and control changes. On the source audio pedal, PC1 calls patch one, PC2 calls patch two, and so on. On the boss, PC1 calls the manual patch, PC2 calls patch one, PC3 calls patch two, and so on. This can be changed in the menu. The control change options can be found in the menu of the boss pedal along with the control change numbers, which you can change. If you need to find the control change list for the source audio pedal, you'll need to open it in the software. Here you can change them as well. The sound quality of these pedals are nearly identical to my ear, but looking a little closer, there are some differences. Starting with the bass line, just running some pink noise through the pedals with the gain of all the bands set to zero, there is a bit of roll off on the high end of the source audio pedal. It's certainly not drastic, especially considering you have very little response above 10 kilohertz on a guitar. Also notice the scale of that graph. There's about a 2.5 decibel drop at 18 kilohertz, then a quick drop off. To me, the drop isn't a big deal, but it's there. It's not even worth talking about noise with these pedals. From what I've measured, neither pedal adds any significant noise to the signal chain. I did have a chance to use both of these pedals at two separate gigs a week apart. I had dialed in the EQ on my boss pedal first, so I did my best to copy patches to the source audio using EQ traces, and they are pretty damn close. Using them live, I noticed zero difference sonically. I could easily swap these pedals out and not know the difference. There is one thing that came up with the source audio pedal that I didn't like. When powering it up, it always reverts to the first patch. My first patch was my wah. When I set my rig up for a show, I didn't have the MIDI connection set up right and my tone was crap. It was so bad the sound guy asked me what was up. After sorting that out, it was fine. This isn't the case with the boss pedal, it loads the last patch used when it was shut off. This isn't a huge deal to me as long as you don't have an annoying patch in the number one slot, which I already fixed, but if you plan to use the source audio without MIDI control, you might get really annoyed with it. But really, you should be using MIDI. So what's the verdict? Honestly, I couldn't tell you. It's up to how you plan on using either of these pedals. With no significant sonic differences, it all comes down to usability and 
dare I say, looks. The boss pedal definitely looks better, but it isn't as versatile as the source audio. If you don't like using software to control pedals and just want a pedal that's more straightforward, the boss might be a better bet. But if software is your thing and you want a powerhouse, the source audio is the way to go. The nice thing about these two pedals is that while they are similar, they are very different in many ways, which gives us two great options depending on what we need. Hopefully this video gave you enough information to make that choice. For me, I'll have to wait and find out when I finish updating my pedal board. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. But until next time, rock on. Oh.